Park. Let's speak to Hudeifa. Good afternoon. Tell us the latest from Suswa Hudeifa. He said the president is in Kiambu, headed to Uhuru Park. He'd come here then again to launch this Suswa uh, power station. But after uh, launching uh, the Suswa power station, he would be going, after launching the Suswa uh, substation, I mean, he would be doing a public rally in Suswa grounds where he'd, of course, talk to the Ma Nation, uh, which for the longest time, uh, the, the opposition guys, Nasa, were here the other day, three days ago. And I think the president would come here to uh, talk to the Ma community and make them understand that, you know what, the president's development record would take you forward and if you guys re-elect me. But before all that, the president would come here, launch this power substation, which connects Ethiopia to, to Kenya so that they can have a transition line that, of a power sharing agreement. Uh, the, the power Kenya Ethiopia power agreement starts from El Bur in Marsabit County, comes through Nanyuki and Oldoniro, comes to Suswa and this substation. This substation here, uh, of course, all that line is 612 kilometers, but this power station here, this substation here that you can see, has, 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 has a, a, a capacity of 220 kilovolt. That is when it starts from Olkaria power station. To Suswa, but generally the Ethiopia uh, Oldoniro Suswa power station holds 500 kilovolts. It's something that has never been seen in the country. The transmission line can carry 500 kilovolts. It, it's, it's a big project. Of course, you can remember that the president uh, prioritized prioritized uh, power and reconnecting homes through uh, the national grid. And in in, in a way, Kenya trans, uh, Kenya Electricity Transmission Company is aiding the Jubilee government's manifesto in a way. But the president, as you rightly said, is Kiambu, headed to Uhuru Park for a rally, would be coming to uh, uh, Suswa substation before doing a public rally in Suswa grounds to address the Ma nation. Uh, we would bring you everything as it happens here. We are expecting energy stakeholders to come here. Charles Keter, the C cabinet secretary for energy, then many representatives from all, all, uh, all power generating companies from Kenjin, Kenya Power Lighting and Company and Kedrako would be with the president, would be on the, with the entourage of the president. But then again, the president would address the Maa Nation at Suso Grounds. This and many more. Join me, Hodei Faiden, right here on NTV. You know, the president will be in Suswa first to launch the substation and secondly for a political rally. Let's now take you live to Hudefa Hudefa. that the president is expected here for, to commission this project but then again to do a, a political rally but before then you i think uh, you you guys had the pictures of energy C cabinet secretary charles keter being here he landed here a few minutes ago he's waiting for the president and of course many other st uh, energy stakeholders are here but right now i'm joined by the uh, by the general manager for technical services of ketraco dr joseph siror who tell us briefly about the whole uh, project and what 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 what, what is involved Thank, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, kindly briefly tell us about the whole project which starts in the, the Ethiopian border. Yeah, there are a number of projects really that get Kenya Electricity Transmission Company is undertaking. And possibly if you'll allow me, I can just briefly mention what uh, Ketraco is all about. They are in the energy sector, there um, they are different categories of the players. Of importance are those who generate energy. That is where you have Kenjan, that's also where you have GDC. You also have independent power producers. And then it's Ketraco that comes in next to evacuate power from the generation plants and take them to where they are required. So the player that comes after Ketraco would be Kenya Power and Lighting, who will then distribute power to all the consumers and the retailers. Now, the challenge in the past has actually been that whereas the distribution network has been growing very rapidly, the transmission network has not equally been growing. And the challenge that that poses is that the stability of the network is compromised and also in terms of resilience, the resilience, availability, and reliability of the network cannot actually be, be at the level that is required. So it was then that Kenya Electricity Transmission Company was, was formed. And uh, I would want to note at this point that since 1954 to the year 2007 when Ketraco came on board, the total transmission line length was 3,000 kilometers. And as we are here today, the length is actually approaching uh, 5,000. That means that we have almost doubled within that very short time we have almost doubled what it took close to 50 years to actually do. And now, coming to, to this particular project, 
and again, which is part of the mandate of Ketrako, one of them is to, to avail power in places which were not served in the past. The other one is to strengthen the grid. And the way the grid is strengthened is that we create what is called redundancies. Like in the past, Nairobi, actually to date, Nairobi has been served by all carrier through only one double circuit transmission line. That is the one going to Nairobi North, that is in Tandora. Now, the challenge of having such a configuration is that whenever there is any challenge on that particular transmission line, you would actually uh, encounter a whole outage in the city of Nairobi. But right now, with this project coming on board, we have a new line that is Susua Isinya. And then from, from Isinya, of course, it goes to Mbakasi. And then we have another one that is Mombasa, Nairobi, that is actually that will enable power to be evacuated from Olkaria via Susua, now to Isinya and then to Mombasa. Now, the importance of that particular transmission line is that to date, Mombasa has heavily depended on thermal power. And the underside of that is that thermal sources are usually very expensive. And not only are they expensive, but they are also not environmental friendly by virtue of the carbon emissions, the carbon dioxide, and the pollution to the environment. So we are actually gaining a lot in terms of the price that energy is going to be available at, and also at the same time in terms of the levels of pollution that are going to ex experience in the coastal region. So on the side of uh, redundancy or strengthening the grid, what we are actually providing is that now there will be an alternative source or an alternative path of powering Nairobi through the line that is going to the river. And even as we talk right now, at the river also which has uh, where the cement factories and a number of industries there have depended heavily also on thermal, are currently, as we are talking, being served by the cheaper geothermal sources. So yes, there are a number of projects. There are a number of projects which are passing here. Suswa, of importance to note is what uh, you had mentioned before. That is the Kenya-Ethiopia transmission line. That is uh, the length between here Suswa and the border that is going to Ethiopia is actually about uh, 600 kilometers. There is also another 400 from the border to a place where it is starting in Ethiopia called Wolaita Sodo. The other projects that are also coming to Suswa here is the Loyangalani Suswa. This is the one that is going to enable the 300 megawatts that is from the wind power to be available here in um, to be available here in the in the country and to be available here at Suswa and then which can actually go to the various parts. Now the Kenya Ethiopia line, the importance of that particular transmission line is that it will enable what we call power dread in the region. What we mean by power dread is that the energy resources available in the different countries in the region are not the same. There are those which have excess and then there are those which have less. Now those which have excess have at times no mechanism of ensuring that that is put to useful use. While those who have less are forced to use expensive thermal sources. Now with completion of that line, yes. uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Soriru. Of course, we'll be talking about this and many more later when the president and, and, and his delegation comes here.